like every four-year-old, I suppose. I love dinosaurs, and I just thought this would be cool to do. And uh, and I think it's common for paleontologists. I just some people don't let go of that goal, and I'm one of probably one of the misconceptions I like to clear up is no one goes out and randomly starts digging a hole ever. Uh, we go to sites that we have reason to believe there may be something and uh, it may be largely due to what research question we want to answer. So then we go out and generally what we call prospect, just scour the ground. And when we dig a hole, we're following something back in. We're not uh, just randomly digging a hole. There may be suitable rocks for dinosaurs in the Phoenix Valley, but they're probably a mile deep. When you look at something like um, the Tasmanian tiger, mammoth, passenger pigeons, some of the things I've heard, these are recently extinct animals, and you can get pretty clean and suitable DNA. Uh, when you're dealing with a dinosaur, and of course you're dealing with any ancient DNA, you have to amplify it. And that amplifying's a lot like putting a, a microphone on something. Can you build a microphone good enough to hear somebody talking a mile away? Probably you can, but your big problem with that microphone would be all the noise that you'd be collecting from everything else a mile away. And that's exactly the problem you get with DNA. You're going to get a lot of other things, from worms to plants to everything else, DNA, noise, and then you have to somehow sort all that out and, and, uh, to get to dinosaur DNA. My job entails making sure nothing bad happens to these, we hold these bones in trust for eternity, which is kind of an awesome <laughs> responsibility.